I now request Professor Amina Kishore, Head Department of English, Manu, to deliver the welcome address and conference raison on the author. Good morning, welcome, Adab. It's a privilege to the Department of English when our well-wishers, our friends, our colleagues, they come in response to our call, our invitation, and they join us. I always feel proud that the Department of English has enjoyed great affectionate place in the Manu campus and also outside. I thank you all for coming this morning. <clears throat> Professor Maurya, Professor Khalid Saeed, Professor Sudhakar Marathe, Professor Patil, Professor Kidwai. I thank you all for agreeing to address the gathering on this very important occasion. Shugupta has already spoken about the department. I'll come to that by and by. But before I say anything, I must extend my sincere thanks to Professor Khalid Saeed, the in-charge Vice Chancellor, for not only standing by us, but giving us valuable advice and extending a hand of help every time we needed that. So the grace with which you are moving the university through this interim period, it's been marked by all, and I pay my personal compliments to you for that. This morning, Professor Iqbal Ahmad, our in-charge Vice Chancellor, called up from Bangalore. He's not keeping very good health, but he extended his warm wishes to the Department of English. And he asked me to welcome the delegates on his behalf also. So I do that duty. About the department, I never tire of expressing my pride in my young colleagues and my students. I recognize with great warmth the trust that has been imposed in me by my young colleagues the affectionate regard in which my students hold me, and for all these mercies, I thank Allah. About the conference itself, we have a number of fine intellectuals who will address the gathering through the two-day program. And this morning itself, we have been able to invite extremely valuable speakers, speakers whose value to the seminar will be endless in the sense that they will motivate, they will give a direction to the proceedings, and they will spell out the different aspects of the theme of the conference. Therefore, I shan't stand here for long, but it's my duty to explain our understanding of the theme of the conference and to spell out the objectives. We call the conference a conference on discussing the new perspectives in non-native literatures in English. There are one or two phrases in this formulation which I would like to discuss briefly. First of all, the terminology, the phrase non-native, this phrase was born out of our small objection, and I think this objection is shared by most scholars, of calling these literatures new, after these literatures have been visible and working well for so many years, for a long, long time now. So they are no more new. Therefore, we looked at some other formulation, and we thought of this possibility of calling it non-native literatures vis-a-vis the British American literatures as being the native and other literatures being non-native. But that also is a mere technicality today. You'll all agree with me. There's nothing like non-native with reference to English because everyone who uses English for communication and for creativity, he is native to that language today. And the way the so-called non-native nations have come forward in the creative world of letters in English, they, I think, 
We need not say where they stand today. They are among the leaders or they are the leaders. But here we are not here to make any comparisons and decide who is the best and who is the better. About the new perspectives, again I'll say there's nothing new about these perspectives because the non-native literatures are today able to use many of the strategies which are native to their cultures and to their literatures, and they are happily and very boldly applying those perspectives over English. And that also is an understandable and acceptable term. My concern is about the academia and the state of research, state of course formulations, state of evaluations in English studies. I do feel somehow, and I'm saying this with great personal concern, that though the crisis of creativity is over, the crisis of identity is put behind us quite happily and healthily. Somehow and somehow there is a stasis in the academic programs. The academia, the universities, the departments, they seem to be either unwilling or afraid to take up new issues, to be innovative, to be experimental. In most departments in India, especially today, our programs of study do not seem to have undergone much change from the times that we have been students, we seniors. Especially in research, one would like a bold innovativeness, an activism, a search for new models, a search for nativism of the most dynamic and with young scholars who have come here as delegates, with my young students who are planning to go into research programs, with my more senior students who are already on the road to becoming equipped to be language teachers, literature teachers. May our tribe increase, but may new winds change the directions. I do hope that the conference will send a message, a proactive message of newness, innovativeness, and boldness. With these few words, I'll take my seat but before I sit down again, let me say how thankful I am to each one of you, especially the functionaries of the university, the different sections, the section heads who have stood by us, who have accepted our plea for help. I notice many friends sitting around here who help without a word, but I'm grateful to everyone, everyone for the help rendered. Thank you so much. I request Professor Marathe to please deliver his inaugural address.